Welcome to the breakthrough series of Radical China. I'm Lin, the China lead at Radical. Radical is a new market insights firm that sources proprietary perspectives from industry experts to help the world's leading companies and investors better navigate uh, the future. So today in our Breakthrough China series, we invited Mrs. Lan Shi, the founder and CEO of CoCafe. CoCafe is a pioneer in NFT development in China dedicated to metaverse marketing and creator economy. CoCafe has abundant experiences in providing a one-stop NFT service from creative production to distribution and sales. They have worked closely with the leading industry brands in entertainment, consumer brands, automobile, and retailer industries um, and clients, including China Guardian, McDonald's, um, Oreos, Porsche, and Nayuki. So Ms. Lan Shi is a thought leader in education, entrepreneurship, and innovation with deep experience in China. She's the board member of MIT Sloan School of Management and the founder of Y City. She serves as the judge of Forbes China 30 Under 30, Holt Prize, and the MIT Inclusive Innovation Competition. So welcome, Lan. It's a pleasure to have you today. Thank you, Lin. It's my pleasure. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we can get started to dive more about CoCafe. So first, can you tell me a little bit um, about CoCafe? Yeah, sure. CoCafe is actually a new company we started this year. <laughs> we, we are born for NFT metaverse. We started this company because we see a trend of uh, Gen Z and all these new generation who born with access to digital world and their preference to video consumption has been really trend in China and Asia and the rest of the world. So we started this company this year and we focus on NFT development, especially in the China region. And we dedicate it to metaverse marketing and creator economy. I will explain what is metaverse marketing later on, but it's actually new arena that I think all the marketers, they need to understand it's very different from the traditional marketing and it's even different from the internet marketing or digital marketing. Cool. So how does CoCafe work with, with brands? We, we have a creative studio called Codeco and a blockchain studio called CoLab. So our experience, our services is actually combining both the design creative side and blockchain technology and products. For example, we have rich resources in designers, artists, creators, developers, and web three marketing. And we u utilize these talents and insights to help our bread customers to understand what's the need for Gen Z and how they can differentiate from their competitors in the market when they deliver the message and co-create the story to enrich their contents in, in terms of how they deliver their products, how they attach more emotions in their marketing campaign and how to create the digital goods, for example, the NFT collectibles and how to ensure when they deliver the digital goods to the market, it's uh, attached to their physical products or their existing service. So the consumers will view this as a holistic approach and they will appreciate the rich content within it. Um, I'll give a few examples how we work with brands such as McDonald's, Oreo, Porsche, quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. That actually uh, leads into my next question, uh, which is what are some recent brand collaboration examples and also what role did CoCafe play in some of those? I think I will share a screen. Uh, yeah, please. So let's use this example. We create the first digital cookies in the world uh, with the theme of Chinese sunshine. Because this year, Oreo, they, they have a whole year marketing theme of black and white, and they have white Oreos 
coming to the market. We create a 360 degrees digital show that the consumers can view on their mobile phone. They have an existing physical exhibition, but not all the people in China, they can come to Hangzhou to see the show offline. But online, within a mini program in VC on their mobile phone, every consumer, they just plug in their mini program, can view these beautiful shows on their mobile phone. In addition to that, we create 5,000 unique digital cookies, and we call it non-fungible Oreos, NFOs. And each of them will have a unique Chinese sunshade painting. It's quite beautiful, and the consumers love it. Consumers, when they buy cookies from the mini program, and they will get a lucky number. And if they get really lucky from the lucky number, and they will get this one of the 5,000 digital cookie. And it's quite a successful marketing campaign for Aria. Oh, cool. Um, I thought last time you mentioned also the collaboration with Porsche. Is it also something that uh, you want to you wanna share with us? Uh, sure. We work with Porsche China, the strategy department, to see what we can do in China. When all the brands enterprises, they get into NFT marketing. The first thing they think of is, hey, we find an artist or we use our internal designer and we design one piece of work and we put it into an auction and the proceeds will go to charity. So that's easy access to get connected with NFT and Metaverse and Crypto and Web3. But in addition to that, how can we connect our consumers to this crypto world? How can we incorporate more values in a marketing campaign and how can we connecting the dots so we work with Porsche to start with a proof of concept within the company itself and we created HTML NFT wallet and an exhibition platform in a compliant way to meet the regulations in China I need to mention that no Regulations in China is quite different from the rest of the world because a uh, cryptocurrency, no matter is Ethereum or uh, Bitcoin, is not allowed to be in transaction in China. So it's okay that they hold some of Bitcoins, but you cannot tra do transactions in China. So we have to do everything within the regulations foundry in China. And we expect to deploy this technology. We have tested later in a real business in Porsche China market from building maybe a Porsche metaverse or deliver the gifts to the new car buyers. And we, we will also test out to connect with Porsche's marketing campaign and other things. For Porsche Global next year, 2022, Go crypto web three and connect it with this new trend is an important thing. And for post China, it's also important that we understand what is the direction of the future and future consumers and where they put their attentions on. So as now brands, as now marketers, we need to go to where our customers go to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds like this Porsche campaign is giving the the car owners more kinds of this exclusive labels uh, that gets them more involved with the brands. Uh, in addition to having a Porsche key, they now have a more Web3 exclusive like NFT to testify that they belong to this Porsche community. Yes, there is a Morgan Stanley report in terms of how luxury industry is connected to crypto world and connected to metaverse. Especially for the brands, they have uh, their strong IPs, such as luxury mm -hmm. brands. Their customers or potential customers, they already like the brand. They have strong fan base. And it's very natural for them to connect their fans to the digital products, to their digital world. And it, it's something they have to do because if they don't do it, their competitors and the newcomers will do it. And the future generation, they spend more and more time in the digital world. 
and they don't separate the difference between virtual world or reality. For them, they, they meet a friend on the internet or they meet a friend in a bar. It's the same. It's a continuous splitting or continuous sharing between virtual and real world. So it's very important, I think, especially for the market leaders, if you don't do it, then let's don't say five years later or 10 years later, maybe three years later, there will be a strong newcomers. They will occupy the main size of the new generation. And it, this is a strong trend in China that the new consumer brands, they are coming up very quickly, it's exponential growth. So we see more and more New consumer brands, especially in cosmetics of food, but beverage, snacks, sports. So I think international brands, they also need to act soon. Yeah. Oh, I think it feeds into my next question. When implementing the NFT strategy, what are some consumer preferences and consumer behaviors in China that global brands like Oreo and, and Porsche and, and others you should be aware of? Oh, okay. Uh, this is a quite good question. I will uh, have some reference from m and report. They, they deliver a report, a report focused on metaverse marketing. Um, in the report, they mentioned that with Gen Z and millennials, they, they will comprise half of all consumers in Asia by 2025. And marketers seeking to win this consumer class need to focus as much attention on what is next and new as they do on what is now and what is next and new. It's an interconnected virtual world based on Web3 technology, mm -hmm. an environment in which users don't distinguish between the physical and digital. And also they expect all of their friends, goods and experiences to be connected virtually. So that's something we call this interconnected life, persistent virtual world, metaverse, especially after Facebook changed their name to Meta, I think this trend of um, interconnected, persistent virtual world is becoming more and more important for all the brands you need to keep in mind. And some key factors that may be different from the rest of the world in China and Asia, the demographics have a bigger size of the Gen Z and millennials. And also the digital payments on their mobile phone. In China, we use Alipay or WeChat Pay and all these mobile payments. It's almost over 90% of uh, on the payment lenses. And these social commerce, actually we do um, all these broadcasting sales in Chinese, we, we call it always these KOL sales on the social media and also the video consumption. I, maybe each of us, we spend 80% or 90% of our time online. So this is uh, very important that uh, this content consumption and social engagement prime the region for the growth of metaverse. So I think international brands, they need to understand this mobile trans penetration, social shopping and content-based consumption has separated the region from the rest of the world that you have to create a lot of contents. And how do you create a lot of contents? It's not only by yourself. You need to co-create with your friends, with your customers and with these outside suppliers. Yeah, I guess. So those are mainly three points. First around this higher mobile penetration, in China compared with the rest of the world. And that also feeds into this Chinese uh, specific shopping behavior, which is these like social shopping, like broadcasting sales and also kill on social media. And then uh, yes. th thirdly, uh, which is this like content-based consumption, like people are willing to spend money um, on some of the contents and also like following the purchase uh, behavior based on what they see on social media. Um, yeah, I guess just a follow up yeah. question, because as we all know, the broadcasting sales, KOL sales, social shopping, uh, live shopping, a lot of our, our clients are very interested in that. So how do we embed this metaverse and NFT uh, marketing 
in social shopping? Oh, that's a good question. So when we do metaverse marketing or NFT marketing, we can engage these KOLs. We can create some contents or create some virtual products for them as the first wave. And they will share on their social media and that they are using these very trendy virtual products and they even put on their social network as portrait and mm -hmm. some content. So uh, their followers look at their be behaviors and say, hey, I want to get one too. And they will get into these products. Another thing is that we will create a lot of chatting groups or mm -hmm. social media hot topics that people can follow. And when they, people follow these topics, they will co-create the content. They do the content creation together with the brands. Recently, Disneyland, they have pink thoughts called Big Nabel. Call their fans on the social media. They will do it by themselves to create a lot of pictures, videos, and share with the social media. And these behaviors of self-spreading the contents, self-spreading the news happen in about a very short period of time. So we think it's very important that you utilize the contents on the internet and you create some topic to engage your fans to work with you together. And when you create something, it's not only a drip hack, it's something we name it as non fungible token or name it as a digital asset that your fans can really get hold of something. Then we will combine all these things together, uh, not to mention Vata, digital twins, and you create a digital identity for your fans to connect that with your CRM. All these things together, you create some very different experiences for your customers, for users, for your fans. Mm -hmm. Great. And I guess to, to sum it up, why should brands adopt an, an NFT strategy and what advantage does it give them? Speaking in the lens of both big brands, incumbent brands, as well as like D2C brands. What opportunities does this work? We have a lot of customers. Our first wave of customers are the leading brands, industry leaders. So we understand why they become the industry leaders because they always keep an eye on what is the trendy stuff and get hold of the new emerging technologies and the new emerging marketing tools. And in addition to that, we also get a lot of requests from the emerging companies and the startups. They are small, but they are very active in the market and their growth rate can be very high. So I think for the big brands, they have to keep their leading positions by trying something new and by being innovative and being brave to break some rules and to break some traditional habits so that they can always be on the top of the wave. If they don't do it and they are followers or the new customers to the market, they will become growing very fast and become the market leaders. So that's our advice for the leading brands is if you don't do it, then you will be back. And the you know, followers will come up. And for the emerging brands, I think there's even bigger opportunities for them because the, this is a new world. Everyone is on the same starting point. So if you do the things right, and if you do the things in a very smart way, you can become market leaders or you can grow very fast. You can get a normal growth rate. Let me use another example. In China, tea consumption or new generation tea consumption is mm -hmm. a big sector. So there's a company named Nariki. Nariki is the first company they go public. Um, they only have six years of history, but it's already a huge company. Yep. And this year, just a few weeks ago is Nariki's six year anniversary. 
and they work with us to create a narrative digital campaign with a new digital icon. And we also create a seven black box of NFTs. And this is a very successful marketing campaign. Within 72 hours, their sales reach about 200 million RMBs. This was 30 million US dollars. Yeah, US dollars. So it's very successful. And the NFTs we created was sold out within one second. And even to that, after the marketing campaign, there are a lot of news, a lot of reports and analysis in social media broadcasting. It's not created by Nariki in a company. It's created by news reporters, industry analysts, or consumers. Mm -hmm. And they just keep you know, marketing with it going on. It's, I think the ROI for this marketing campaign is very high. So not only in terms of they generate this huge GMV, but also their brand image, their impact in the industry and how they get deeply connected with their consumers and fans. And for these new brands, we work with McDonald's. McDonald's has been into China market for these years, 31 years. And Oreo is a brand with a hundred years history. Now Ricky is only six years, but it's going very fast. So I think when you utilize these new marketing tools, we call it metaverse marketing and you can generate huge rewards. Yeah. And, and from my understanding in that UK case, it's their avatar who is acting as a normal like KOL in the broadcasting room and they sell the kind of the gift card version to celebrate their six year anniversary. And that's where the, the 200 million RMB sales so within 72 hours is coming from, right? Uh, yes. It's not only in a broadcasting room and in the, mm -hmm. every shop. Offline shops, they all sell, you know, gift cards. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So that's a combination of offline sales and also avatar led broadcasting, like live shopping sessions, as well as the, the merchandise, like the digital merchandise, which is the, the avatar version of, of Nayuki. That's pretty cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think this case can give reference to a lot of consumer brands because they have offline sales. It's only in their supermarket or, and they, they will think of how to combine online and marketing offline channels together and to generate and combine a digital goods and actual goods together. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. yeah, 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 definitely. And how is an NFT marketing strategy for brands different from this web two marketing and what should brands keep in mind? Okay. Uh, when we talk about from migrating from Web 2 to Web 3, we need to understand that from Web 3, there's a very important thing is that it's a decentralized one. So in Web 2, uh, these internet giants such, you know, Google, uh, Facebook, now it's called Meta and Amazon, all these internet giants, they can monopoly the, the volumes, the, the traffic from the internet, and they use these three million business model that the consumers, they, they watch the advertisements and they can use the internet tools for free, but all the data goes to the internet giants. In China, there is Tencent, Alibaba, and there's Baidu. They, they also, it's the same thing. They have all these traffic and all the brands, all the enterprises, all the consumers, they need to pay actually a lot of cost to get this traffic. But for Web3, it's a decentralized one. And the data belongs to the consumers, belongs to the users, belongs to the brands. And how can we utilize this? And Web3 is also based on the blockchain technologies. So all these things um, means we need to change our mindset when we talk about metaverse marketing. Now, metaverse can be thought of as a new marketing ecosystem. This brings to key questions for brands who need to 
be far more proactive in creating their own virtual version than they have with regards to digital endeavors. So it's not the same as a digital transformation. It's more than that. Understanding this new ecosystem and willingness to create new experiences that are authentic to the community is crucial for brands seeking to engage consumers where they live today and tomorrow, not where they, we, you found them yesterday. So uh, there's a key word, it's called authentic to the community. So you need to be very genuine. You need to be sincere. You need to understand what's the value of the community. It's not something the brand is uh, top down and we just create a story and we tell you and buy it. No, it's not that way. It's that how you get into the community. You are like in the same position. You look at them as friends. Uh, we can use a few examples that uh, Visa, Visa, they buy a crypto punk and they also issue a report on NFT and they, they, you know, they buy a crypto punk to um, shoot case to the world that, hey, we are humble. <laughs> we, we get to understand the crypto communities. We are one of your communities. Also, Budweiser, uh, the big company, they are very active in metaverse marketing. They also buy a BAYC portraits. That's mm. a very popular crypto world. Mm. So um, the new metaverse marketing ecosystem requires brands to be to create experiences true to the characteristics of metaverse. Components enabling the creation of this, including we just mentioned avatars, digital goods and collectibles, such as NFTs, virtual programming, augmented reality, all these virtual shoes, and then they are all um, part of the metaverse marketing ecosystem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. And in terms of the current NFT adoption in China, where are we in the, in the adoption curve today? And how do you foresee that changing in the next few years? We think it's just a starting point. So now when you do a case, we often say, hey, this is the first case in the industry. So for McDonald's, uh, we work with them and then the first case in the restaurant industry in China. For Aurea is the first case for Snap Goose. So right now, I think a lot of brands or uh, companies, when they do their case, they want to be the first one in their vertical sectors. So we see it's more and more brands coming in. It's not only the leading brands, the brands with a lot of uh, consumer space or uh, long history. No, it's everyone. It's no matter the size is big or small, no matter the history is long or short, no matter it's only a few RBs, or no matter the customers, they are young or old, it's all coming. I think it's very important that so we highlight the brands need to think of it. If you don't have an NFT plan in your mind, at least you need to pay attention to the market trend. You need to talk to the industry experts such as Radical China. And you need to, maybe you, you can also connect with Co-Cafe. You need to understand what they are doing. Then come out with your own plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And what are some current uh, challenges? So we've talked a lot about the advantages mm -hmm. of adopting NFT strategies. What are some challenges that you currently see to adopt an NFT strategy, especially in China? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the, the first challenge is lack of awareness, talents, and insights. When we talk about lack of awareness, is because NFT, um, well, what is NFT? It's very hard to understand. What is metaverse? It's something, it's just a bubble, or is it something not related to us? So not everyone already have an awareness. And talents is even less because the blockchain engineers in China, and it's very expensive. And so the people who understand the crypto industry 
they understand the community is very limited. So this is the first challenge. And the second challenge is you need to understand the regulation and you need to manage the risk because uh, I just mentioned that crypto trading is forbidden in China. So if you don't understand this part, then it's easily to cross the line and there will be a disaster for big brands. Oh, I wouldn't mention the name of brand, but there is an automobile company. They tried to do something this summer and they choose the wrong partner. And this wrong partner, they have a behaviors in a crypto world and trading. So it's not allowed by the government. So this marketing campaign, they just announce it and they get a call from the government and it's deleted. So that's something you need to understand the regulation. You need to manage the risk. You need to find the right partner who understand the Chinese market, who already have experiences working with leading brands. Yeah. And the third one, I think is uh, you need to change the mindset. When you do a uh, marketing in web too, especially in China, now it's getting to a custom or habit is how much you pay for the traffic and there is the transformation rate, conversion rate, then how much revenue you generated. So if you look at Web3 marketing, Metaverse marketing in this way, you will be very disappointed because it's not directly related to sales. It's not like something you buy traffic and you get sales at the same time. You need to create the contents. You need to get engagement from the consumers and fans. You need to create the vision to share your story, to co-create the story with your customers. And the, the bad side of buying traffic is the brand is diluting the power of their brands. And if they don't spend the advertising money, they don't get the revenue. So all this branding power is get diluted and the customer become very sensitive to promotions, to prices. And it's not good for the long-term development for the brands. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like in the previous way, you would pay a huge amount of marketing fee to get exposure in, in front of your consumers. And then I guess, that can have uh, some adverse effect on uh, your focus on building your brand and focusing on your on your product. But now in the new generation of this NFT marketing, Metaverse, Web3 marketing, you should focus more on like engaging with your community, really understanding what their interests are and also create this uh, connection uh, between them. It's not like you put the money out there you get yourself in front of your consumers and you get the conversion. It's more about more genuine work and more uh, kind of connecting uh, with your community. Yes. I think Metaverse and NFT marketing, they give more opportunities for creators and more opportunities for creative, innovative brands. Because now, especially in the new generation, Gen Z and millennials, it's very important that, that they like your brands. The physical products is getting to more and more um, difficult to differentiate because everyone, they, they probably use the same outsourcing pro producer or it's very difficult to separate your products only in the physical functions. Mm -hmm. But different brands, they have different emotional attachments. They have different histories. They have these different contents created contacts, scenarios with their consumers and users. That's something NFT and Metaverse and Web3, you can utilize or you can fully utilize your potential in creating the contents, contacts, scenarios, and to build the emotional bonding within the community, mm -hmm. with your customers and friends. Mm -hmm. So what's next for CoCafe? Anything on CoCafe's roadmap that you're most excited about? We will continue serving the industry leaders. And in addition to that, 
we will launch a more standard napkin marketing service package that's for more SMEs. We will create more tools for creators. Web3 Metaverse is now land for creator economy and we will implore hybrid releases of NFTs and develop utility for our existing NFTs. So people will like get NFT, what can they do with their NFTs? They will attach more functionality, social network, and also uh, meanings, contents in that. Mm -hmm. Great. Really looking forward to, to seeing those in the future. And thank you so much for taking your time to talk to us, Lan. And it's, it's a pleasure to have you today. Thank you, Lee. The project's online and we really appreciate this interview. I think it's very important that we deliver the message to, uh, the, to the world, to the marketers, and let's create a metaverse for our new generation for better life together.